Hey guys, Chef Nick Peters Bond here, and this is Comedian Kitchen. Welcome back, or welcome to my channel. We post videos every Thursday. If you'd like to be notified about when I post, please click the bell icon. You can also subscribe to my channel, like, spam, comment. I love it all. Everything helps. <laughs> so on today's video, we're going to be making skirt steak street tacos with my version of guacamole, as well as a spicy charred pineapple margarita. I'm not going to be drinking the margarita, I'm going to make a mocktail version and then we'll just get my husband all liquored up and it'll be great. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm going to pull you a little bit closer and we can make the marinade for the skirt steak. Okay, so that was a lot of footage you just saw. It was fast, but it was a lot of footage. So we did the marinade for our skirt steak, which had a bunch of a bunch of spices in it. That will be my Patreon, the exact spices I used. Let's just say there's chili powder, cilantro, onion, garlic, lime juice, orange juice, a lot of stuff for like a classic carne asada type vibe. And then we also did the guacamole. You can, there's very polarizing guacamole recipes out there, I'm sure. However, mine is pretty straightforward. I do like stuff in my guacamole. Some people do not like that. I did avocados, lime juice, cilantro. I did some garlic on a microplane, some red onion, some de-seeded tomato, because I don't like how wet it gets when there's too much of the seeds from the tomato. So I just squeezed it out and that was fine. A bunch of cilantro and some jalapeno. You can make it as spicy or as not spicy as you'd like. Just to make sure to always taste it. For seasoning, usually guacamole absorbs tons of salt and also lime juice, so make sure you have plenty of lime juice on hand. I obviously use fresh squeezed limes. You have to use fresh squeezed for this, sorry. I also put a little bit of the lime zest on that. And then we're gonna carry on these flavors into our margarita recipe. So the margarita I'm making today is a charred pineapple and jalapeno margarita that's going to have some fresh squeezed lime juice, fresh squeezed orange juice, triple sec, tequila, agave simple syrup, it's gonna be delicious. So I'm gonna pull you a little bit closer and we'll cut up this giant pineapple. Obviously you can buy a smaller pineapple or buy some already cut up. You don't have to buy a whole one for this recipe. But my daughter will eat this throughout the week and we'll eat it and whatever. So that's fine. <laughs> so we're gonna char it on the grill. Um, so we're gonna go preheat that, get our pineapple charred, and then also we'll start cooking our skirt steak for our tacos. Okay, so I cut up um, half a jalapeno. This is raw. Um, this is going to be for our margarita. That will just be basically muddled into the drink. And I am gonna show you guys a mocktail version of this as well. I myself don't drink anymore. Um, and I have friends who are also sober who don't drink either. Shout out to my, my bae, Caitlin, and then my boo-boo, Walter. Um, I just like having that al alternative to a cocktail because a lot of times I find when you go out to a restaurant now that I'm newly not drinking, it's been just over a year. And you know, the mocktails are obviously I don't think I didn't mind making them when I was a bartender because I was like, oh, this is fun. It gives people who don't drink something different. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you both today, an alcohol ver alcoholic version and then a non-alcoholic version. So I just chopped this up. The pineapple, I'm just gonna cut, obviously I cut the top and the bottom off and I cut the peel off the sides. Um, I The way I cut mine is I just chop now around the core. I'm sure there are plenty of ways you can look up how to, fancily cut a uh, pineapple, but it's not this channel. <laughs> so I'm going to put probably, I don't know, maybe like half of the pineapple in the grill. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right, hey guys, we are in my beautiful backyard. Um, I brought the ring light outside, everything. And we have our brand new Monument Grill, um, hashtag not sponsored, that we put together. And by we, I mean my husband did. And if you're interested in 
that it'll be featured on his new YouTube channel, DIY Boulevard. He's going to be doing all things related to the home because it's just not my thing. Oh, shoot. I'm not a DIY fixer up type of person. That's all him. So if you're interested in that, he'll be starting his YouTube channel, DIY Boulevard. You can follow him on Instagram as well. But enough about that. <laughs> the Monument Girl has been working really well. Um, it also looks brand new and shiny, which I love. And then our skirt steak looks amazing. It's been marinating for about a half an hour. You can see all the onions and the jalapenos. Cilantro, I don't know why I said jalapenos. Onions, spices, it's gonna be great. So before we do that, I do wanna char our pineapple real quick. So I cut half of it, I just cut it into little planks. The light's pretty bright. Just so that way it'll get even grill marks and you can actually taste the charred flavor. So I'm gonna use Thomas with our hands. We're gonna put that on before we put our steak on because obviously this is not going on the steak, it's going on a drink, so I don't wanna like cross contaminate anything. So we're gonna do about two minutes only aside. It's just to get some nice grill marks and a little bit of charred flavor and just depth of flavor. And it also will start caramelizing those sugars in the pineapple, which just be so good in the drink. So I'm really excited about that. And then once that comes off, I will throw the steak on and that's gonna cook. It's pretty uh, fairly thin. I think you'll probably cook that for about like five minutes aside and let it rest for 10 minutes and we'll check it. Um, internal temperature, I always like to do about 145 for beef. Um, if you like it a little bit more cooked, to like 150. I wouldn't go any, anywhere past 155 for a beef unless you really want to hammer it down in this case. Please don't do that. What did the beef ever do to you? Come on. Anywho, and if you like videos of me outside grilling at night in the cold, then like this video, subscribe, comment, great. I will say, not to toot my own horn, but like the lighting looks pretty good on my face. <laughs> Not that this video is about me, it's about the food, but I look, don't look bad, I'll say that. Casual Diet Coke t-shirt moment. So, and this already smells so good, you guys. So if you, once you start grilling pineapple, you'll start to see any kind of fruit or anything like that. It releases so much sugar and they start to caramelize and it just has a complex flavor. And so it almost takes on like a caramely type of flavor, which will go so well in our margarita. So I'm gonna flip this over and then I'll be right back and I will show you um, the skirt steak. All right, so my pineapple's been on the grill for about like a total of like three minutes, perhaps. I don't know, like, you know, just enough to get it some color. Um, obviously you can move it to the indirect heat up top if you wanted to, if you didn't want to get it like so caramelized. I'll show you. I just burped, I'm sorry. Great color. It's charring really well. I might actually turn this heat up just a little bit. Let that go for a few minutes longer. And on the other side of the grill, it's a little bit hotter. I'm going to throw my skirt steak on. I'll just show you again because it looks so appetizing. <laughs> All right. And don't worry about the onions and stuff. You can always, they, they come off. Um, it was more for like the flavor purposes. So that's going to go about five minutes aside, like I said. I mean, I'm looking for an internal temperature of like 140, 145 max for myself. And I don't want to let it rest. And don't forget, guys at home, people always ask me, like, how come my meat's overcooked? Carryover cooking time is so real. <laughs> it's a real thing. And get yourself a meat thermometer. So if you're cooking chicken at home on the grill and you're like, my chicken's always rubbery and dry, cook it, marinate it. Well, I marinate your chicken, cook it on both sides. I would say start with like 10 minutes a side. I think chicken's like 15 to 20 minutes a pound. Use a meat thermometer and you want the temperature to be 165 is what when chicken's fully cooked. I pull mine a tiny bit off, like literally maybe like three or four degrees off before cover it and let it rest because the carrier of a cooking time will finish cooking your chicken or poultry, whatever, to 165. So don't overcook it. Just use a meat thermometer. That's like my one big tip is to have a meat thermometer. We didn't have those in Hell's Kitchen, by the way. Little fun fact for you. So I'm going to close this, let this go, and then we'll be back. All right, so now it's time for the booze portion, and I have a very special guest. Special definitely being the operative word. Um, welcome my husband, Mike. Michael, excuse me. This is Michael. He'll be my assistant today. He's going to be making his alcoholic drink and I'll make my, it's basically, he's like, yeah, I need alcohol. It's basically the same exact thing, except in the non-alcoholic version, I'm going to add some mango pineapple juice instead of tequila. All right. So I'm going to tell him what to do because that's what I love to do anyways. So you're going to take a, <laughs> one of these. And the first thing you're going to do is, why don't you put in some, a few cubes of the charred pineapple, maybe like five or six pieces in the bottom. 
and then take like two or three chunks of jalapeno and I'll grab the tequila and stuff while I'm over here. Two, three. And then you're gonna wanna squeeze your citrus. So there's half a lime, a quarter of a carrot, carrot orange, and then like a quarter of a lemon. It doesn't have to be exact. Basically what you're doing is you're making your own sour mix because that stuff's just way, it gives me, first of all, it gives me heartburn. I used to drink Amaro Sours way back in the day and that was like not well.com. It's not good. It's not good. So he's gonna do that. And then we also have an agave syrup. This is literally just like an agave simple syrup, essentially. You can get pure agave too, but when it's cut with water, it helps. Yeah, put the lemon in too. And then for this, I would just do like, you can probably measure it. Where's your little jigger? Let me go get it. Where did I put it? We're so unprepared, oh God. I think I brought it outside. So we're gonna do a few squirts of that. Maybe like half an ounce to an ounce. Eh, that's pushing it, an ounce. And then triple sec, you can use a fancier version. You could use a Grand Marnier or a Cointreau. We're just using triple sec. I'm just gonna put like a three quarters of an ounce of that. And then you're gonna wanna put like two ounces of tequila. Um, you know what, I'll, since you're drinking it, I'll let you do that. <laughs> One Mississippi. Two okay, that's good. Michael. And then I'm gonna have him gently just muddle it a little bit. Obviously you could do the, I mean, I could have had him do the pineapple and jalapeno first without doing anything else, but it's, we're gonna shake the crap out of it too, so it's fine. What am I missing? That's it. And then while he does that, I'm gonna um, put just a little bit of lemon or lime, whatever such you have little rim job moment and then take the if you do salt or sugar i prefer salt even with the mocktail but i think just the salt's just a lot nicer these are a cute little dad hashtag dad life because this is what you need after a long day is a margarita oh shoot okay so now that that's done we are going to put the ice in here to make sure it's on there tight and you want to shake it shake the crap out yes please okay Wow. Okay, that looks perfect. And then you're gonna take your strainer because there is. Oh, it's painful. And then you're just gonna strain it. Do you wanna get, um, you wanna put a little bit of fresh ice in your glass or in a glass and we'll pour some in there? It smells good. You can smell the pineapple. It's probably gonna be strong if you want some feeling from here. So I'll leave my exact recipe for this margarita mix on my Patreon. It's like a blind in the blind. That's probably good. You can see it for your box, right? Okay. And then in goes the cocktail. And you can see the little flecks of the charred pineapple in there. Mm -hmm. And it's almost a perfect pour. We're, getting, we're almost there. Okay. Yeah, and then your garnish, you can garnish it with just a couple pieces of the Pineapple, and then maybe like a little lime wedge if you wanted to. Or a little lime wheel, whichever you want. And then, that's it. Well, umbrella? <sighs> Beat it. <laughs> so that's the charred pineapple jalapeno margarita with fresh squeezed citrus, agave. It's really good. I do. Is it spicy enough? I feel like you could go more. You can always garnish it with another one if you wanted to. No, it's good because it adds the like that pepper flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you bring my mint down to the grill. He's going to take the steak off and I'm gonna show you the mock chill version of it. It's very similar without booze, obviously. So you're gonna to wanna to take your jalapeno. I'm doing three to four pieces. That's just a little slice. Um, same thing. I think I did five or six pieces of charred jalapeno, maybe a couple extra. Since this is a mocktail. Um, tons of fresh squeezed lime juice. If I tons of like half of a fresh lime, I wouldn't suggest doing store-bought lime juice. Limes are like 99 cents just by a lime. It's way better. Some carrot, carrot, orange. You could use grapefruit. You could use a navel orange. Oh, we got a squirter. A navel orange, or you could use clementine. Anything really citrusy. That's kind of the whole point slash vibe of this. Some fresh squeezed lemon juice. And then 
a little bit of agave. We don't need ton for this because we are adding um, juice, but the agave kind of gives it that like, I'm drinking a margarita, but not really drinking a margarita. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the agave, citrus juices, jalapeno, and pineapple, which I probably should have had my earlier, and muddle that first. I just got a little ahead of myself, I'm a little excited. A couple little shakes in there. This is mango pineapple juice. You can find any orange based juice that's like, or a tropical type of juice. It's about two ounces of that. And then I did rim my glass with salt. Even though it's not alcoholic, I still like salt flavor. I love salt in general. Take the top out of this. And if you don't have a strainer, you don't, you don't need one. You can just take the two glasses and pour it directly over it. And similar color, similar vibe. What I love about a mocktail is I'm a big sparkling seltzer fan. So as you can see, the glass quite isn't quite full. I'm gonna take a seltzer, a flavored seltzer. You could use lime, you could use anything really. And hold on, the piece de resistance. This is the, not sponsored. This is the Polar, the new ginger lime mule, which I'm obsessed with and just top it with seltzer. Almost overfilled. Do the same thing for yours, make it fancy. Some pineapple, a little bit of lime. And I mean, this is a, oh, this is a freaking mocktail, people. This is what I'm talking about. This is what you should be getting if you're paying $5 for a soda. Come on, this wasn't that hard. And I think everyone deserves to have a little, still have a little fun when you're not drinking. Cheers, you guys, happy Cinco de Mayo. We're a little, early, but that's okay. Mm. Wow. All right, guys. So I have my skirt steak here off the grill and I have some corn tortillas that I'm going to be just charring. You can do it on the grill. I took the grill off and I was like, meh. You can do them inside. We love that. Put them directly on the burner. This is also a good technique if you have a gas burner that you could do roasted red peppers on if you didn't, you know what I mean? You can roast stuff on the grill and char stuff and make it look pretty. So I have just a plate right here with um, a little taco holder. This is so cheap, they're on Amazon. I'll link my Amazon store down below that like I have my own little picks that I like and I'll include those on there. We use them so much. So take your taco shells, corn or flour is fine. And then you can see there's a beautiful char on there. Maybe I should have done the middle one first. That's okay. All right. So put that aside. Turn your burner off so you can burn your house down. And we're going to take our skirt steak. This looks delicious. Beautiful grill marks. Still feels juicy. Moments. Marinated. It's going to be so good. Take whatever knife I'm using, using this little paring knife. And I um, make sure you always cut. Make sure you let it rest. for resting for about 10, 15 minutes and cut against the grain and that will just make for a more tender um, slice. So my grain's going this way, so I'm gonna go against it and cut this way. And typically with skirt steak, you wanna go a little thinner on the slice, um, just for, it just it just makes for an easier eating experience when you're having tacos. You could also dice this, and a lot of people just dice it up instead of doing that, um, which is fine too. So I might actually dice this up a little bit here, let this rest some more. Um, you don't have to dice this. I'm just thinking about A, trying this on camera, and B, just ease of eating. It's gonna be better when you cut it up. So the salsa verde ingredients came out of the oven. They were beautifully roasted. And I put them in the food processor, added a little bit of fresh squeezed lime juice, and then I folded it in some roasted corn. So I just threw it right in the grill. As you can see, beautiful corn salsa, corn salsa verde. These are very simple tacos. A lot of street tacos don't have a ton of stuff on them. I think I'm pushing it with the, the corn salsa. Usually it's like some sort of cheese, the meat, and then maybe like run out of your cilantro. I'm taking cotija cheese. You could use queso fresco. You could use whatever you want. This um, particular cheese is like a drier, almost like feta-like flavor. It's salty, but like the best way possible. So put some right on top of the meat when it's still warm and then take some of our salsa and just kind of put that right on top. 
And you could really go crazy with this. Add some shaved radishes. You want to do whatever toppings you want. This is just what I think will be bomb. So <laughs> we're going to come back once I clean this up. We're going to taste our tacos. I'm going to bring Michael back and we'll taste our guacamole that we made. So we have our charred tortilla, which I use corn, our carne asada steak, our salsa verde, cotija cheese, corn, and the salsa verde as well. By all means, add the guacamole we made on top of this. It would just be delicious either way. Yeah, so here we go. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. The acid and the salt in this dish is so on point. All right, so I may or may not have already eaten all three of my tacos when he was upstairs. Oopsies, spilled the beans. He's trying the guacamole. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Stunning? Good? Mm hmm mm hmm Okay. I made him another cocktail. He's ready to go. So we're gonna go feast on this delicious meal, our little Cinco de Mayo inspired meal. And it's very good. Until next time, guys, you got this. Bye, Felicia. Hi, I'm Mikey, and this is Commanding Your Kitchen. 